Hello, my name is David Wilcoxon. I work in full-time ministry, and in my prophecy videos and books, I use the title Messiah. And people ask me why I do that, so I'm making this short video to answer the question. Some of my audience uses English Jesus, some use Hebrew Yahusha, and others use Aramaic Yeshua. If I use one of those names, it seems to irritate people who use another name. And since I use the King James Bible version, which uses the name Jesus, it would be confusing if, in my words, I use the name Yeshua. So let's be clear about something. Messiah's parents and his disciples didn't call him by the English name Jesus, as it was not developed until the 16th century. I believe that Jesus is a valid transliteration of Messiah's name based on the Greek Jesus in the New Testament manuscripts. Some people go to an extreme and proclaim that you can only use his Hebrew name. Still, the witness of the New Testament manuscripts and letters from 1st to 2nd century believers validates the Greek transliteration of his name, Jesus. Some people proclaim that the New Testament was first written in Hebrew and then translated into Greek, but there's no manuscript evidence of that happening. The New Testament was written in Greek for a reason, so that people throughout the Roman Empire could understand it, which led to the dynamic growth of Messiah's kingdom in a short period. There are Hebrew idioms and the richness of the Hebrew language in the New Testament writings, but that doesn't prove that it was written in Hebrew. The name Jesus in the Old Testament Greek Septuagint points to Joshua. Interestingly, Jesus Joshua took the Israelites into the Promised Land, and it's Jesus Jesus who takes his saints into the Promised Land of Holy Jerusalem. Mighty works in the kingdom have been done in the name of Jesus during the last five centuries, and I use the name Jesus in the King James text that I cite in my videos and book. But in my words, I use the title of Messiah. And there are other titles, such as Good Shepherd, Prince of Peace, Savior, Son of David, Spotless Lamb. But the name Messiah is very significant, which is why I use it. I think that the most important prophecy for people to understand is the 70 weeks of Daniel 9 prophecy. Daniel 9.25 points to Messiah the Prince, coming to carry out his ministry after the 69th week, meaning in the 70th week. Daniel 9.26 also points to Messiah being cut off, killed by the violent death of crucifixion, which took place in the middle of the seven years of the 70th week. Daniel 9.27 then points to Messiah the Prince confirming the everlasting covenant that was referred to in Daniel 9.4 with his blood as the spotless Passover lamb, which ended the need for temple animal sacrifices. The title Messiah means the anointed one. The Strong's Hebrew dictionary word for Messiah is Mashiach, which means anointed, a consecrated person, specifically the Messiah. In the 70 weeks of Daniel 9 prophecy, verse 24 says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Messiah's ministry and death for our sins fulfilled those six things. Regarding anointing the most holy, it's an allusion to the most holy place in the temple. Messiah referred to himself as the temple in John 2.19 when he told the Jewish leaders, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The temple, Messiah, rose on the third day. He is the Most Holy, who was anointed at his baptism at the start of his ministry when the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. What took place in the 70th week of Daniel was the pinnacle of human history, for in it Messiah died for our sins, so that we can have a covenant relationship with Yah, the Heavenly Father. At the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel, Messiah started his ministry and was calling his disciples to him. John 1.41 says that Andrew found his brother Simon Peter and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So we see that the name Messiah was used to foretell when he would appear in the seventh week, and we see that it was used when he started his ministry. And that is why I use this title. And this no doubt raises the question, well, what name do I use for Messiah? And the answer is Yeshua. Exodus 15.2 in the King James reads, The Lord is my strength, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare unto him a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The underlying Hebrew word of Lord in this verse is Yah. The Hebrew word for salvation is Yahshua. 
Exodus 15, 2 declares that Yah is our strength and song, and He is our salvation, which came through His Son, Yeshua. I covered the name Yah in a previous video. And in that video, I wasn't trying to explain the Heavenly Father's name fully, but rather to give a simple lesson to show how the name Yah and Yehovah has been hidden behind the title of Lord. I'll post a link to that video in the description. I hope that helps you understand why the name Messiah is important and why I use it in the videos. That's all for today. I love y'all. Shalom.